Have you seen pictures of cute crocheted animals like this on the internet? Maybe you've seen how-to tutorials right here on YouTube of people crocheting them. Maybe that's how you came across my channel. If you want to start crocheting your own stuffed animals, you can. In this video, I'm talking about what you need to start crocheting your own stuffed animals. I'll cover the stitches, techniques, and the tools you need so you don't go out and buy a useless kit like that. I know that might sound a bit harsh, but honestly, there's a lot of stuff in there that you don't even need. But let's not get into tools yet because the first thing that you're gonna need is some patience. Learning to crochet amigurumi is a process of learning new skills and then putting them all together to make something cute. I know you might be in a rush to hurry up and make something cute, even if the pattern says it's simple or easy, but trust me, it's better just to get some practice done first. That might sound corny, but it's true. Just be prepared to accept that crocheting amigurumi is a process and it could take some time. Now, let's talk about what you need to buy. You can't crochet without a hook and some yarn. You might be wondering, what yarn should I buy? And you'll probably be tempted to buy some of that trendy blanket yarn or something that looks like fur, but stay away from those. Those yarns can be difficult to work with, and they're not very beginner friendly in my opinion. I've been crocheting for a long time and I don't even want to touch that stuff. So what yarn should you buy? I suggest picking something up that's a weight four. You can find this information on the yarn label, and it's just one way that yarn manufacturers categorize its thickness. Then look for a yarn that's made from acrylic. The reason I recommend this is because it's pretty common and it shouldn't be that expensive. You should be able to pick some up at your local craft store. Most of them have coupons online, so take a look before you head out. In my experience, acrylic yarns are usually spun pretty tight, so it's not going to pull apart as easily as some of these other yarns. And it's also going to help you see the stitches that you make, which will help you learn where to put your hook. As long as you don't select a dark color, try picking out some neutrals like these. Remember, this is just practice yarn, and once you feel better about what you're doing, you can always get into some Something else that's a little bit more fancy. Now that you have some yarn, you need a crochet hook. I know there's a lot of super fancy ones out there, but honestly, I've been using the same one since I started crocheting almost 20 years ago. Yeah, it's been that long. Crochet hooks come in all different sizes and brands, and you might be wondering, which one should I get? The size of your crochet hook usually depends on the type of yarn you select, and the yarn label will have a recommended hook size, so I'd go ahead and choose that for now. Learning to hold the yarn and the hook at the same time can be challenging for some people, so I recommend getting a hook that's comfortable and not too big or not too small. A 5 or 5.5 millimeter hook fits pretty good in my hand, so you might want to give that one a try. When you crochet amigurumi, you don't always pay attention to that recommended hook size because you want your stitches to be nice and tight, and this can vary from crocheter to crocheter, but let's get back on track. Okay, now that you know what hook size you're gonna get, you might be wondering, what brand should I buy? Honestly, I don't think this is a really big deal. I've been using the same boy aluminum hooks for years and it's only because that's what my mom used. Remember, this is just to get you started, and as you gain more experience, you'll start to figure out what you like about a crochet hook and what you want in your next one. So for now, just pick something out to practice with while you're picking out your yarn. Hopefully your store has individual hooks, so you don't have to buy a full set. All right, you got some yarn and you got your hook. That's really all you need. But if you wanna pick out a few other things, here are my recommendations. I really like stitch markers, the locking ones. They help me keep track of the last stitch in a round, which helps me keep track of when I complete a round. I also use them to hold my work from unraveling. Hold my work from unraveling? What I mean is, when I'm done crocheting, I put that stitch marker into the working loop so it doesn't unravel. So you might want to get yourself a small pack. Something else you might want to get is a row counter. They help you keep track of completed rounds, and when you follow along with a pattern, that's pretty important. So these are the manual ones that I have, and I don't bother getting anything else. They work for me, and they're probably not that expensive. If you're crocheting amigurumi, you're going to want to get a bent tip darning needle. They're going to help you get in and around stitches when you start sewing pieces together, or when you need to do some embroidery. I know I try to avoid that, but sometimes it's necessary. Speaking of sewing pieces together, a long weaving needle like this one has really come in handy when I need to go through, like completely go through a, a doll when I'm sewing pieces together. You can also purchase some fiber fill. It's what most people use when they're working on amigurumi and they need to add some stuffing. But 
If you want to practice first, you can probably hold off on this until you're ready to make your first project. So what are these skills you need to practice? First, get comfortable with how to hold your yarn and hook together. Most people find this to be difficult and they stop right there. There are tons of ways to hold the yarn and hook and the differences between right hand crocheters and left hand crocheters. So you might need to experiment and find what works for you. And if you have a unusual way of holding your yarn and hook, don't worry about it. This is supposed to be fun. Who cares what other people think? Now I'm gonna walk you through three different progressions that I think are the most helpful when you're learning stitches and techniques. Here's number one, learn the slip knot. It's usually the first thing you do before you start making chain stitches, which is the next thing that I recommend you learn. As you make those chain stitches, focus on keeping good tension. Your yarn shouldn't sag or be too loose or too tight around your hook as you make these stitches. You want to get consistent stitches, so you're making things that are about the same size every time. Once you're making some really good chain stitches, you can start working into them with single crochets. This is called working into a foundation chain, and it's the beginning of learning how to crochet in rows. I have a full tutorial on how to crochet in rows, and you can check that out here. And I'll leave a link in the description. The reason I suggest learning how to crochet in rows is because you're gonna get a lot of practice making a single crochet, which is really important when making amigurumi. This is also gonna help you understand what that single crochet looks like and how to work into it. This is all learning where to put your hook when making stitches. When you get really good at everything that we just discussed, you'll hopefully have some really good tension. This second progression starts with learning how to make a magic ring, which can be difficult at first. But this is normally how people start when they're learning to crochet in rounds. Crocheting in, in rounds or continuous rounds is really popular in amigurumi. And once you've secured that magic ring, you just start putting some single crochets in it. But the pattern will tell you how many to make. It's usually about six or eight. And once you're done making that first round, you'll just pull that yarn tail tight to cinch everything up. Once you're done, you'll just continue crocheting in a continuous round, which is kind of like a spiral. This is where stitch markers come in handy because without them, you might not be able to understand where you started or where you ended a round. Most amigurumi is really just making the same stitch over and over. Sometimes you'll put two stitches into the same place, which is known as an increase, or you'll shrink two stitches into one, which is known as a decrease. I have a video on that. You can check it out here. This last progression you should learn is working around a foundation chain. It's very similar to how you would crochet in rows. You make your chain stitches, and as you work to the opposite end where the slip knot is, you just turn your work and keep crocheting on the backside. I also have a tutorial on this, and you can check it out here. The last thing you should learn how to do is the slip stitch. It's not that hard and it doesn't always show up in amigurumi, but when it does, you'll know how to use it. I hope you can see how the order of learning these things kind of build on each other, or at least I think so. I know this might seem like a ton of stuff, but if you follow these progressions and really make sure that you master one before moving on to the other, I think you'll be ready to start making your own amigurumi. Well, we might need to discuss how to re-crochet patterns. You've got enough on your plate now. Let's save that video for another day. So get some yarn, a hook, and practice. Oh, there's also something else that I wanna mention. Find a nice comfortable place to crochet and make sure there's plenty of light so you can see what you're doing. You can use a pillow to support your arms while you crochet and make sure you're not sitting down for long periods of time. Take breaks and get up and walk around every now and then. You wanna know a little secret? If you drink water while you crochet, eventually you'll have to go pee. That'll get you off the couch and walk around a little bit. And most importantly, don't quit. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Not many people make it this far. I hope you found this video helpful and you'll give crocheting a try. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and come back for more. Thanks for watching.